believe that I promised to show the lightning shark and as well as the upgrading process on the different loadouts. So we'll probably start with that and then we'll move on to the mean potatoes. Coastal tourism in the U.S. continues to grow, leaving millions of naive Americans vulnerable to the graft of beach umbrella renters. So first thing we're going to do is go back into the grotto because we're dumb. <laughs> Alright. So, the way that I'm going to conduct Humans this have seen less than 5% of our sharks this guy would shut the, the fuck up. To focus on personal transformation. So, the way I'm going to do this review is I'm going to talk about what I like, I'm going to talk about what I don't like, and then I'm going to talk about what I would like to see in the sequel. Because this game definitely sets itself up for a sequel, but the way it sets itself up for a sequel is also why this game is good but not great. <laughs> There's pieces missing that held this game back, but for a $40 game, we, we make a little bit more leeway, but you know, we'll get into that in a second. So, let's upgrade this. So, first we got our little Robin mask going on. Why? What? Oh, that's the issue. My controls are set to the wrong fucking binds. Oh, uh, that's really annoying. <laughs> I have my Razor Tartar is set to a different set of keybinds. Whatever, I'll just use my normal keyboard and get this over with. I, I don't, eh, it shouldn't affect the stream. Alright. Got a Robin mask. Now it's got little blue dangles on the tips. Little, little, little blue dangles that you can't even see in this cave. Cool, cool, great. Mm -hmm. I know we're really excited now. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to back out. Even if it gives a better angle, it's just not worth it. All right. Ooh, got more going on now. It's all big, it's spiky. So the next one should probably turn it into a full face mask. Or, that didn't look like it did much of any. Oh, it added the chin dongles. <laughs> okay, hey, we, we added some chin dongles. Pretty cool, changed the color, made it a bit bigger. I think it's probably one of the coolest looking builds, but I think my favorite is the one that makes you ultra fast. Okay, so, let's start talking about the game itself. Because, my friends, I like this game. I do. I, I like this game, but I, I don't think, I think it would be unfair to my sensibilities to say I love this game. Uh, so, first up. We're gonna the talk water about. along Caviar Key is frequently described as gin clear. I might, I might shut this fucking guy up. I can't, I can't have this guy constantly fucking interrupting me. That's really annoying. All right, back on track. Back on track. First and foremost, this game is absolutely visually perfect. I like. I can think of no real aspects of this game where I would complain about the visuals. The visuals are spot on, and that's the end of that story right there, pretty much. Alright, we're gonna make our way over to here, because I said I would do that last time. No complaints about the visuals whatsoever. Next up, I like eating people. That part's really fun. Uh, but overall, I think the combat in this game is absurdly simple and we'll get into that in a little bit when we're talking about the cons uh after that we have world building the game's been the world itself has been built in a in a very alive way the the main antagonist you know you hate him you understand him the di the, the narrator in the background i don't think he made me laugh once but it's he's pretty good overall uh after that, I mean, the game has funny moments, but overall, it's really hard to say that this is a funny game. It's a good game, it's a humorous game, but eh, I've, laugh I've laughed harder fucking around in PUBG, let's be real. So, man, my list of stuff I like about this game is pretty short, but I mean, the, the list of stuff I don't like about this game is, is pretty short too. Um. 
so we talked about the visuals a bit and I'm gonna dial that in a bit more specifically and talk about the bosses are really really cool like they all have pretty unique character models and when they do that little intro scene and they come at you like that's pretty cool like that's an interesting thing but now we're gonna start talking about the cons of this game and the, the biggest most glaring issue with this game is the combat it is overly simple for a game that the devs described as being Dark Souls with sharks. Um, honestly, that's a bit insulting to the creators of Dark Souls, in my opinion, because that's like me saying that, like, oh, if you if you can't get into Dark Souls, why not just play Dark Siders instead? It's a third-person hack and slash RPG adventure. That's the same vein, right? It's like, no, obviously not. Like. Dark Souls is really GDF and hard, but it's hard in a way that's masterable, learnable, makes you better at the game, and when you are done, you feel like you've accomplished something and overcome insurmountable odds. This game has absolutely none of that. The, the combat's as simple as bite your target, try not to get hit. And like, once you hit a certain point, trying not to get hit is irrelevant, you might as well just spam damage. So. To me, if you're gonna say this game is Dark Souls-like, then you're just an asshole. Because there's nothing about this that is, says Dark Souls to me. It, at all. Uh, on top of that, bosses... On top of that, I've had this happen multiple times where I knocked out a gate and I can't get through because the gate is still in the thing. They, that's annoying. Uh, so, the thing about bosses is they're supposed to add something new to the experience of combat. When you get to a new boss in Dark Souls, the biggest thing is I need to memorize these attack patterns, I need to figure out what this guy is putting down when and how, so that I myself don't get put down. This game has none of that. This game has absolutely zero of that. The, the bosses behave exactly like every other enemy in this game. They're gonna try and fuck you up, and that's it. They don't try and dodge. They don't have special attacks of their own of any kind. They don't, that's it. Like, none of the bosses feel at all unique from their other forms other than the fact that they have more HP. And if the developers feel that like a boss just has more HP and doesn't add a whole lot to the to the situation that has art than what has already been presented, then that's just an ob objective lack of creativity. Like just because I'm a shark doesn't mean this game has to be simple. I could have abilities, and in fact I should have abilities that aren't my bite, and that aren't my dash, and that aren't my tail whip. Because the tail whip is pff, whatever. Like the range attack, every. Everything you have, every part of your kit, just makes it so you can spam damage and ignore any amount of skill more. So, as you progress in the game, it just gets laughably easy. And if you can't tell from the fact that I've been talking about this for a while, this is my biggest complaint far and away, is that the combat is overwhelmingly simple, and that the bosses add nothing to the game they had literally nothing so i'm guessing this new area that i've made my way into is just some sort of side area that didn't matter for the main quest in any way and now i'm just here doing stuff which you know kind of gets into my other issue with this the game's missing something like pretty much in all aspects of the game it's just missing something like it the combat's missing something the story's missing kind of something because it's like basically just you versus this guy with the fish like there's no every time we go to a new area other than being visually different there's no difference there's no difference every time you go to a new area you will be tasked with killing a bunch of people killing the local wildlife and then killing the local predators that's every single area is the same and so the things that make the game different are like the cutscenes and stuff that happen when you finally encounter Pete 
And that's... Eh, it's not enough. That's... That's $20 game shit right there. Is really what that is. This game... Is twice as expensive as it should be. This is probably going to be my final analysis. I paid $30, and I think anyone who paid $40 probably got ripped off. Like, as much as I enjoy this game, and as cool as aspects of it are, it's... It, for a game about the ocean, the literal ocean, this game is incredibly shallow. I don't know. If you don't know what I mean by that, I don't... <laughs> I feel like I've explained it pretty well at this point. The game offers the same thing each time you get to a new area. And the big flavor enhancers come from upgrading your guy. And the way that they enhance the flavors, they make you look cooler and they make the game way easier. Yeah. So that's pretty much the cons of the Endeavor. And now I would like to talk about the sequel. Because I'm really disappointed this game didn't have an end game cutscene. So this game starts with you getting cut out of your mother. And then you find out that you are also female. So, kind of expected this game to set up some form of sequel in which you either get pregnant or it's hinted at the fact that you're gonna get pregnant or like literally anything hinting at that. So for the sequel, and I know this is gonna sound fucking stupid, I would like to see some romance. I would like to see some Mega Shark romance. Because I think it sets the story up for a better, more interesting future than what they set themselves up with at the end of this game, which is maybe everybody's dead. Cool. We know that nobody's dead. Because this is a video game, and movies and video games always do the same thing. Nobody's fucking dead. So, out of the sequel, I really, I'm not going to buy your game unless I see deeper combat. Because I, I don't want to just spam click at everything. I don't want to do that again. I'm not going to... That was my issue with Assassin's Creed 2. Is it felt exactly like Assassin's Creed 1. So, if you release Man Eater 2, and people are saying this game feels exactly like the first one, you have a problem. I'm not buying your game. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. So deeper combat and the way that we're gonna shoot for deeper combat is more fucking options like i realize that i don't have hands but that's your creativity that's a problem because i'm sure i could come up with other ways to make this and the bosses more interesting <laughs> like for example what if moby dick prioritized fucking stun locking you with anchors or some shit and then it's like, if I get hit by that anchor on his tail, I'm fucked and I can't let that happen. Like, literally any amount of uniqueness from the bosses would make the combat more deep. Any amount of more options on the shark would make the combat more deep. Hell, even depth has a short lunge and a long lunge option. This game has this. This is, all you, this is what you get. These are your options. This is how you attack. This is it. This is all you get. You, you, you get two options. That's not enough. So, for a $20 game, that's enough. For a $40 game, eh, let's maybe put a little bit more effort into that. So, uh, there is basically only really one more thing I'd like to see out of the sequel. And the thing I would like to see out of the sequel is more of the shark getting into places that sharks shouldn't be. I would like to be a bit taxed on how much I can go on to land to, to try and get some missions done and maybe if I try and do a mission a little bit before I have the lung power to do it I just physically can't do it I dry out and I gotta come back later uh, I would like to see my shark swimming through pipes to get into like labs that are experimenting on my shark brethren so that I can free them I I'd like to see a bit more story in general because you can have a silent protagonist and have a really interesting story. And you can have a silent protagonist that has like motivations and stuff that you're aware of. So to, I guess, conclude this review after swimming around basically what feels like nowhere. Like what even is this? Like, let's check the map real quick. It's just a 
there's no quest in here, so it's just a, just a random area to explore for no reason than other if you want to eat some more license plates and eat some more, eat some more chests that you definitely don't need. <laughs> As you can see from my max level. So, yeah, to conclude, this was a very good game for $20. But for $40, this game was incredibly shallow. And like, eh, you could argue that that's okay. That as long as it's fun, it can be shallow at $40. But I have a huge boner for $15 games, my friends. And I, I've had way, way, way more fun for much longer playing other games. I got 12 hours out of a playthrough on this game. And I paid for three movies. So I basically could have seen six hours worth of movies or I could play this game for 12 hours. That's better. I'd say that's above my bare minimum, but that's still not. It's really just not great. So, this has been my live review. I hope you found it informative. Do, be fe do feel free to agree or disagree with my sentiments in the comments. I'd like to see what you would like to see happen in the sequel. Um, specifically, hey, I was really hoping that my shark would have some kind of baby and that would be the setup for the sequel, but that didn't happen, so I guess that'll have to happen in the sequel. Uh, anyway, this has been Maneater, and I, I hope you somewhat enjoyed the whole endeavor because I enjoyed the endeavor, even if I feel like I am out $10. <laughs> Alright, thanks my bad bovine, have a good one.